I expose my narcissistic and abusive father to his in-laws. To give some context, my parents were extremely young when they had me. They had a tumultuous relationship, marked by frequent breakups and reconciliations. This cycle continued until my mother became pregnant with my younger sister. During their time together, I witnessed my father's abusive behavior toward my mother, which left a lasting impression on me. One of my earliest memories is of him holding my mother down in our living room, repeatedly hitting her while I curled up in a corner, screaming at him to stop. After my sister was born, my father essentially abandoned us. He frequently job-hopped or went without work for extended periods, neglecting to pay child support and missing visitations to the point where a judge revoked his rights. Despite his lack of responsibility, I noticed that whenever I did see him, only a few times a year, he always had the latest gadgets, a new car, and other material possessions. As I grew older, my communication with him dwindled to almost nothing. I might hear from him once or twice a year, and sometimes I wouldn't receive any contact for over a year. Eventually, in his 30s, he went back to school and built a successful career. A few years ago, I attempted to reconnect with him while finishing college, but it quickly fell apart. During this time, he began disparaging my mother, who raised my sister and me on her own, worked two jobs, and put herself through college to provide for us. I confronted him about the lies he was spreading, recalling how often I waited for him to pick us up only for him to never show, despite having the same phone number since childhood. He is a textbook narcissist, and when faced with the truth, he shifted the blame onto everyone but himself. In response to my confrontation, he told me he wished my mother had terminated her pregnancy with me. That was the last communication we had. For years ago, during our brief reconnection, my father started dating a woman I met once. She seemed kind, but I felt it was important to warn her about his true nature. However, I knew she was likely enamored with him and would dismiss my concerns, as he is a master manipulator. I suspected he had spun a narrative about how my mother had kept him away from us, turning us against him. They married a few years after I cut him out of my life, and they now have a daughter together. My sister and I have become very close and are inseparable, which makes it painful to think I may never have a relationship with my half-sister. About a month ago, I received a Facebook message from a woman I didn't know, who identified herself as my father's mother-in-law. She chastised me for not trying to build a relationship with my half-sister, who is now a toddler. She suggested that as an adult, I should have a mature conversation with my dad and consider his perspective. Knowing she wouldn't believe anything I said, I decided to take a different approach. I asked for her address and sent her a 20-page letter detailing the reasons for my estrangement from my father. In the letter... I recounted the abuse I witnessed, how he cheated on my mother, and how he left us struggling for money, even living out of our car at times. I provided documentation, showing he had missed every visitation for two years, was $25,000 behind in child support, and faced felony charges. I also included police records of my father's physical abuse towards my mother, with multiple documented incidents. Additionally, I attached copies of messages where he callously refused to help my mother buy winter coats for my sister and me, stating we could freeze, and another message where he expressed a wish that my mother had aborted me. I sent all this information to her, and I am currently waiting for a response. I don't feel guilty for what I did. I believe she and her husband have a right to know the truth about my father and what kind of man they have welcomed into their family. Many commenters expressed their support saying they were eager for an update. They speculated that my father's mother-in-law might have been misled by his charm and manipulation. One commenter noted how my dad had likely painted himself as a victim to her, claiming my mother had kept him from his children, thus depriving her granddaughter of a relationship with her half-siblings. They remarked on how interesting it would be to see if he could manipulate his way out of the situation, and many hoped that the truth would finally come to light for the sake of his wife and child. The original poster, Opie, describes a difficult and complex relationship with their father, who is conventionally attractive and has the ability to charm others. He is compared to actors Paul Walker and Ryan Phillip, and is currently very successful, 
making a lot of money. However, despite this external success, Opie reveals that their father has a troubling history of dangerous behavior, and while he may seem likable to those who meet him, the reality of his actions is far darker. Opie discusses how they had previously sent a letter to their in-laws, detailing their father's abusive past. In the post, Opie acknowledges that while it was the right thing to do, exposing people like their father often leads to retaliation, as these individuals rarely remain quiet after being called out. They warn that their father may seek revenge, but fortunately Opie, their mother, and sister have had no contact with him for years and remain cautious. The letter Opie receives from their father-in-law is both heartfelt and supportive. The father-in-law begins by apologizing for his wife's intrusion into Opie's privacy, recognizing that revisiting painful memories may have reopened old wounds. He expresses his deep shock and devastation upon learning the truth about Opie's father, admitting that the story they had been told for the past five years was entirely different from the reality. The father-in-law confesses that he had always been suspicious of Opie's father. He had noticed early on that it was a red flag that none of Opie's father's grown children or family had anything to do with him, and had even warned his daughter to look into it further. His instincts told him something wasn't right, but he didn't have the full story at the time. As he read Opie's letter, the father-in-law found that much of what Opie described about their father resonated with his own experiences, as his own father had been similarly abusive. This personal connection made the situation even more impactful for him, and he had always vowed to be the kind of father who takes care of his family, in contrast to what Opie had experienced. The father-in-law then admits that while he had been tempted to reach out to Opie over the years to get their side of the story, he held back, not wanting to be intrusive. Now that the truth has come to light, he understands that many of the things Opie's father had told them over the years about Opie and their sibling were likely lies. He acknowledges the manipulative tactics used by Opie's father and admits that he and his wife are now at a loss for how to handle the situation. While the father-in-law is committed to not informing Opie's father that they have this new information, he shares his dilemma about whether or not to tell his daughter, Opie's father's current partner, about Opie's revelations. He and his wife are concerned that if they confront their daughter with this information too soon, she may become defensive and cut off contact with them, which would leave both her and their grandchild in the care of a potentially dangerous man. They worry that their daughter isn't yet ready to accept the truth, despite the overwhelming evidence Opie provided, but they promise to tell her when the time is right. The letter ends with the father-in-law apologizing again and expressing how proud he is of Opie for their courage in coming forward with the truth. He hopes that one day, Opie's half-sibling, his granddaughter, will get to meet her older sisters and admires Opie's bravery, wishing that his granddaughter could have the same courage. Opie concludes their post by thanking everyone for their support and expressing a sense of closure. They feel as though they've finally been able to speak their truth and get justice for their mother. Opie is now ready to close this painful chapter of their life and move on. In response, the commoners praise the father-in-law for his compassionate and thoughtful approach, recognizing that his calm and measured response shows he is a good and honorable man. They express hope that the in-laws will eventually tell their daughter the full truth, as the situation raises concerns for both the wife and and the child's safety. Many feel nervous about the potential danger Opie's father still poses, especially since there is no indication that he has truly changed his behavior. The situation remains delicate, as the in-laws must navigate how to protect their daughter and granddaughter while avoiding driving them into isolation. The situation described involves a man, let's call him Opie, who recently got out of prison after serving a seven-year sentence for a crime he didn't commit his wife did. Opie met his wife 11 years ago, and they both grew up in a tough neighborhood. Early on in their relationship, Opie had frequent run-ins with the law, living recklessly until their son was born. The birth of his son made him change his ways and settle down. However, his wife, who had always dreamed of becoming a nurse, began to fall into similar patterns of trouble. She wasn't as deep into crime as Opie once was, but she was on a dangerous path. At some point, Opie's wife got involved with one of Opie's former partners in illegal activity, 
and drugs ended up in their home. Opie knew this was going to lead to legal trouble, and when the authorities got involved, he made a significant decision. He took the blame for the drugs. He did this because his wife had no criminal record, and he didn't want both of them to be taken down, which would leave their son in an even worse situation. Opie believed that by taking the fall, his wife would have the chance to become a nurse and break the generational cycle of poverty they had grown up in. He saw this as the best way to give his children a better future. During his time in prison, Opie struggled with resentment, especially knowing that his wife had continued with her life, advancing her nursing career, moving to a better neighborhood and raising their children. His daughter was even born while he was incarcerated. However, every time he heard his children's voices or saw them happy during visits, those negative feelings would dissipate and he reassured himself that he had done the right thing for their future. Recently, though, things took a turn for the worse. After an argument with his wife, during which Opie had taken the kids out for the day to make memories on his day off, his wife said something deeply hurtful. She told him he was too busy in prison to understand how things worked around their home. She immediately regretted saying this, and she has been apologizing ever since, trying to make amends. But Opie can't shake the hurt and betrayal he feels, considering the circumstances. He sacrificed his freedom so she could pursue her career, and her remark brought back all the emotions he had tried to bury. Now, Opie is torn. He doesn't know if he should continue pretending to accept her apology or have a serious conversation about how much her words hurt him. He is especially confused because their children don't know the full story behind why he was in prison, they don't even know that he took the fall for their mother. Only Opie and his wife know the truth, along with a few close family members. People in the community have strong opinions on the situation. Many feel that what Opie's wife did was incredibly immoral, and they can't understand how she could allow him to serve such a long sentence for her crime. Some point out that if the Board of Nursing ever found out, it could cost her her license, as healthcare professionals can face serious repercussions for drug-related offenses. Others believe that while the wife's actions were wrong, Opie's sacrifice allowed his family to break free from the cycle of poverty, and their children are now thriving because of his decision. For instance, Opie mentions that his son recently won a district science fair, an achievement that might not have been possible if they were still living in a rough neighborhood. Ultimately, Opie's dilemma is complex. He knows that without his sacrifice, his family's current success wouldn't have been possible. Yet, the pain of his wife's recent words and the weight of what he went through for her make it difficult for him to move on without addressing the issue fully.